What's up guys, today we are going to talk about something that is awesome. If you haven't already, check out our first video on this, but we are gonna be talking about astrophotography and specifically how to use one of these. So this specifically is the iOptron Sky Guider Pro. It happens to be my favorite uh, in the field tracking device for astronomy. What I'm gonna talk about today though will apply to all types of trackers. So if you don't have this specific one, maybe you have the smaller brother, this guy, the Sky Tracker Pro, doesn't really matter what I'm gonna talk about Will apply to them. Now, big, big, big thing, we are doing a giveaway. If you want to enter, we are giving away this little beauty, still fresh in the box, tape is sealed. Mm, still smells new, beautiful. This is a iOptron Sky Guider Pro, which we're demoing in this video. We're not demoing the one that's in this box. We're demoing my old sketchy beat up one, but we're giving this away. So one lucky person about a week from now will receive this in the mail. Well, you won't receive it. I'll ship it to you in about a week. All you need to do to enter is like this video. So hit the thumbs up button. You need to leave a comment down below and you need to subscribe to our channel. If you're already a subscriber, that's great. You're already good to go, but make sure you also leave a comment and like the video. Cause what I'm gonna do basically a week from now, I'm gonna scroll through the comments, pick out one that I like, probably just do it randomly. That person will be the winner, assuming that they also liked the video and are a channel subscriber. So make sure you get all that done. Again, we'll be announcing the winner in about a week and that's all you need to do. So win yourself one of these, they're like 450 bucks and we're giving it away. So that'll be awesome. Let's get started with the video. So step number one, you guys, is you want to have your tripod and your ball head uh, or whatever head you normally have, and you wanna remove one from the other. So if you have a super sketchy tripod from like Walmart, this might not be possible. You need a tripod where the head is removable. But step number one is to take your tripod, unscrew the head and screw on the tracking device. Next thing we wanna do is we want to place our tripod on the ground in a way that this little tracker points north. And you may say, well, which part of the tracker is pointing? Well, all of these little trackers will have a polar scope or a axis that you want to align with the pole. And like this one, if I look through here, there's a little telescope and I use that to help align this with the night sky. So what you'll do is you'll place your tripod down on the ground so that this little polar scope is pointing roughly north or south if you're in the southern hemisphere. The idea is that we need to align this tracker with the north celestial pole or the south celestial pole. So roughly the North Star or Polaris or the Southern Cross. So place down our tripod with this facing roughly north. Next step is to unscrew this thing because we need to make sure that our tripod is level in order for this to work properly. So unscrew the head, take it off, get out a little bubble level. I actually carry one around almost all the time when I'm shooting this kind of stuff. You can also use your phone. A lot of phones have a level app. Set that down on top of your tripod and using the three tripod legs, make sure that your tripod is level. Once your tripod's level, take this guy, screw it back on. With any luck, it should be facing the same direction, still facing north or south, depending on what hemisphere you're in once you screw it back onto the camera. Next step is to attach our equipment, whatever imaging equipment we have. And this is gonna vary a little differently between whether you have this guy, which has a counterweight shaft that we can use to balance the load, or whether you have its smaller brother or another tracker that doesn't use a counterweight. If you have one that doesn't use a counterweight, like this little guy, the Sky Tracker, what you'll do is you'll take your ball head or your tripod head that you removed from your tripod, and you'll screw it onto this little top plate right here. If you do have a counterweight shaft, you're gonna wanna actually attach the counterweight shaft, put the weights on the counterweight shaft, and then attach your ball head to the opposite side of the counterweight shaft. So you get it all attached. And again, the whole goal of the counterweight shaft and why it's nice is because it lets you balance everything out and it puts less load on the tracker, thus making it more accurate. So we wanna get our ball head attached to the tracker, either with the counterweight or without, and then we want to attach the camera to that. Now, one quick note on attaching the camera. Nicer long lenses will have tripod collars, which are little collars that go around the lens, and they have a little foot on them. If you have one of those, you want to attach your quick release plate to the tripod collar on the lens, because that will help keep everything balanced. It'll put less strain on the mount, on the head, on everything. So that'll work if you have it. If you don't have it, don't sweat it. Just attach your camera like you normally would to the ball head, which is on the mount, which on the tripod. So at this point, you should have everything level, everything should be attached, and from now on, we're gonna kind of vary a little bit depending on which mount we're using. If you're using a mount that does not have a counterweight shaft, you can stop right here for a quick second. If we do have a counterweight shaft, the next thing we need to do is balance it. The whole point of having that counterweight system is to reduce strain on the tracking motor inside of your mount. So if you do have a counterweight shaft, what we wanna do is loosen this clutch, and again, and this is specific to this mount, your mount, 
result may vary depending on what you have, but there should be a clutch somewhere. And that clutch releases the rotation axis of the mount. But you wanna loosen the clutch that will allow it to rotate. Most mounts that are lower end will only have one clutch. So we would release that. And that'll let us freely spin. And then what we wanna do is rotate that counterweight shaft so that the shaft and the camera and everything is parallel to the ground. And once it's there, we're basically gonna slide those counterweights out and in on the shaft until everything stays perfectly balanced if you let go of it. And this can take a little fiddling, but eventually you'll get it perfect where you can let go of the whole system and it just stays there perfectly level and great. One quick note on this, I use a little bit heavier of a camera and a tripod or a camera and a ball head setup. So for me, I actually had to order a second counterweight for my counterweight shaft to make everything balanced. They're like 20, 30 bucks. So you might have to do that depending on your imaging setup. So we're level, we're roughly pointed north, we got the gear on there, and if we have a counterweight th system, we are balanced. The final thing we're gonna wanna do with the counterweight system is we're gonna wanna rotate that, once it's all balanced, rotate that counterweight shaft around until when you look through the polar scope, you'll see a little clock. And we wanna rotate that whole shaft around until the six on the clock's at the bottom, the 12's at the top, just like a normal clock. That little guy's called the polar scope and that's gonna help us get aligned when we start alignment. Once you get that rotated around, if you have a counterweight shaft, lock down your clutch by turning that clutch knob, however your mount may do that, and you're good to move on to the next step. At this point, we need to get the mount aligned. We need to basically teach the mount where the north or south celestial pole is. Now the first thing we need to do is get rough alignment. And that actually started when we pointed the mount to the north or to the south. So that part's done, we're pointing roughly north or south, but the next thing we need to do is point at the right altitude, right? Basically these mounts have what's called altitude adjustments and azimuth adjustments. And we need to make sure that the altitude adjustment is set correctly for your location. So what you need to do is figure out what your latitude is on the earth. Here in Missoula, we're about 47 degrees north. So what you can do is loosen your little locking knob for your altitude adjustment, and all mounts should have this. Um, and you can twist this little knob right here on this mount, and we can get it so that there's a little altitude adjustment here, we can get it so that it is pointing at whatever latitude you happen to be at. So for me, I would turn it until right about here, and then I would lock it down. Now, is that perfect? Not even close, but it gets us within a certain range. So now we're pointing north, we're pointing at the, roughly the right altitude to get Polaris, the North Star, or the Southern Cross in our frame. Now we're ready to actually do precise alignment. So next step we wanna do is get out the app that your manufacturer included, or sometimes they make you buy it. So I have an iOptron app on my phone. I would get that out, open it up. It should display a little picture of exactly what you see through the polar scope of the mount. So when you're looking through this little scope, that little clock I was telling you guys about before, the app will show you that little clock and it'll put a little red dot or a little green dot right where you're supposed to put Polaris. Now, you need to take a quick moment and say, time of day here matters a lot. I prefer to set all this stuff up and do what I was about to do. And I should also say, I've been blabbering for a long time right now. If I wasn't blabbering, this whole process takes like five minutes. It's not that bad. But what I'd like to do, I like to do that in the light. So usually I'll start setting up my equipment right after the sun goes down. I'll get everything set up. And then as soon as dusk hits, the nice thing is that at least in the Northern Hemisphere, one of the first stars to become visible is the North Star or Polaris. And that's awesome. So I actually prefer to do the alignment stage early in the night because it makes it really easy to know when you're looking through this scope and you see a star, most likely it's Polaris, most likely it's the North Star. And Southern, Southern Hemisphere pe fear people, same kind of thing for the Southern Cross. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look through our polar scope and we are going to use the altitude adjustment and the azimuth adjustment. And azimuth are these two knobs on the back. And we need to basically turn one in, tighten one, as we loosen the other. And that will pitch the mount to the left and to the right. So we're gonna use the azimuth adjustment and the altitude adjustment until the star in the app, right, we're looking at that app, is exactly where it shows it to be. So you'll look through the polar scope, and as you're looking through that, you're turning azimuth, adjusting elevation and altitude and you're getting the mount perfectly lined up to where the North Star or the Southern Cross should be. As soon as you get that star in the right place, you're gonna lock everything down. So tighten down elevation, tighten down your azimuth knobs, get everything locked, altitude azimuth, all good, 
set, and then you're ready and you're, you're aligned, you're good to go. So that should be pretty easy. It's basically just check the app and then use azimuth and altitude to get it in the right spot, to put the star where we want it. Next thing is to just turn it on. So there's an on off switch. We're gonna flip on the mount. We're gonna make sure that we're on the one X tracking speed. And we're also gonna make sure that you are set to the Northern hemisphere or Southern hemisphere, depending on where you are. Once it's on, it's very slowly rotating. It might not look like it, but this little gear will make one rotation every 24 hours. And that's perfect. So once you have it on, you have it aligned, it's left Leveled, it's balanced, everything's set. The last thing you gotta do is actually find your target, actually see it in the night sky. If you have a counterweight shaft tracker like this one, the way we're gonna do that is just loosen the clutch and that will let us rotate in one axis. And then we'll loosen the panning knob on our tripod head that our camera's mounted to and that'll let us rotate in the other axis. And all you gotta do is just point around, find your object, lock down the clutch, lock down the pan knob, and the tracker will do the rest. The tracker will keep that guy right in the frame. If you don't have a, uh, a uh, counterweight shaft, you will just loosen your, your uh, tripod head, point your camera wherever it needs to go, tighten it down, and it's the same exact thing. Make sure it's on, make sure it's in the right hemisphere, and boom, Bob's your uncle, you're done, that's all there is to it. Last thing is just to test exposures, right? The whole point of using one of these, and again, if you haven't realized the point of using one of these, check out the video I made last week, it's linked up there in the corner. But the whole point is to use a slower shutter speed. And what that lets us do is reduce our ISO, get less noise, everything's great, bing, bang, boom, like perfect, right? So you wanna find out how slow of a shutter speed you can use without the stars trailing. So I usually shoot some tests. I'll try 30 seconds, try one minute, try two minutes, four minutes. I'll keep pushing the envelope until I see trails on the back of the camera. And then I know, oh, that's too far. I'll back it off one setting and I'm good to go. So you get that figured out, then you start your series of exposures, figure out your ISO, you're probably shooting wide open with your aperture. You start that exposure, probably use an inner volometer to shoot multiple frames one after the next, and boom, you've got a stack of frames to work with when you're doing astrophotography. So hopefully this clarified the process. I know it was a long video, apologies for that, but I really wanted to go into detail on how you set these up in the field, get them aligned, get them balanced, get them set, and actually start shooting photos. Again, if you don't have a tracker and you want one and you're within a week of me uploading this video, let's enter the giveaway, right? All you gotta do, hit that subscribe button, make sure you're a channel subscriber again if you're not already or if you are already, you're already good. You don't have to like subscribe again or unsubscribe and resubscribe. Just make sure you're a subscriber. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below. And if you have a question too, leave a comment down below as well. I'll check them out, see if there's any good questions down there. And lastly, special thanks to Canon. They provided this camera that is shooting this video. They're awesome to us, they're a great company. So thank you, Canon. You are amazing. You guys have fun shooting astrophotography. I wish you the best. Let me know if you have any questions and enjoy it, man. Have fun. Thanks for watching.